A man walks into prison for the first time and is about to hear the most bizarre thing he could ever imagine. According to prison records, he's already been serving a sentence there for the past two years for first degree murder. But here's the twist. He swears he's never been arrested before, let alone committed such a heinous crime. How can this even be possible? Is this a classic case of identity theft or is there something even more sinister at play? This true story exposed a critical flaw in forensic science and changed the world of criminal identification forever. On May 1st, 1903, an African-American man named Will West was admitted to the United States Penitentiary at Leavenworth, Kansas. He was convicted of manslaughter as during a street brawl, a man died because of him. As part of the standard admission procedure, the prison clerks took his photographs, a physical description, and 11 anthropometric measurements, a method known as the Bertian system, which was the gold standard for criminal identification at the time. The Bertian system was an early method of criminal identification that used detailed physical measurements of various body parts, photographs, and descriptive information to uniquely identify individuals. However, when the prison clerk examined Will West's measurements, they matched exactly with a man of a similar name, William West, who had already been serving a life sentence for murder since 1901, which was two years ago. The prison clerk was stunned and confused about what was happening. Will didn't know how to prove his identity as he clearly denied being the man he had never met before called William West, who was already serving time. The prison clerk assumed he was lying since he knew most criminals are reluctant to admit past crimes. To add to the confusion, when the clerk showed him the photograph and details of William West, Will grinned and and acknowledged that the picture looked like him, but he insisted that he had never been to the prison before. Upon further examination, they found that both Will West and William West were two unrelated African American men who, to the naked eye, appeared strikingly similar. Their physical measurements, recorded using the Bertillon system, were nearly identical. This system included measurements like the length of the head, the width of the head, the length of the left foot, the length of the middle finger, the length of the forearm, and so on. This was a peculiar situation for law enforcement at that time. The accuracy of the Bertian system was greatly questioned. The prison officials were in an utter dilemma and had no idea what to do in that particular situation. How could they verify the true identities of these two men? This was the 20th century, a time when the world was beginning to grapple with the complexities of criminal identification. The Bertillon system, developed in the late 19th century by Alphonse Bertillon, was widely regarded as the most scientific and reliable method available. It was based on the premise that no two individuals would have the same set of measurements, but now, it was almost proven wrong. Leavenworth was a high-security federal prison known for holding some of the era's most infamous criminals. The prison officials were shocked when they discovered such a significant flaw in the Bertillon system. The news spread like wildfire, and the people of Kansas were both amazed and curious about these two men. How on earth could two men who looked exactly the same from all angles, almost like carbon copies, actually be different individuals? What an unbelievable coincidence. They were not just doppelgangers, but also happened to have almost the same names. To top it all off, they ended up in the same city and the same prison. People started to create conspiracy theories about this event. Some said they were actually blood related and were brothers in real life, but wanted to hide their relationship and deny it to the world. Some were convinced that that Will West and William West were the same person who was actually a time traveler. Others believed this was a clear case of stolen identity. Now, most of us would think, why didn't they actually use the fingerprint identification system in the prison, since fingerprint technology was invented way back in the 1800s? To understand this, let's find out when did it all start. The history of fingerprinting dates back thousands of years, but its systematic use in criminal identification began in the late 19th century. The fingerprint classification system has a rich history, starting with ancient civilizations using fingerprints as signatures. In the year 1880, Sir Francis Galton, a British scientist, conducted extensive research on fingerprints and established that they are unique to each individual. In 1892, Sir Edward Henry, an inspector general of 
police in Bengal, India, developed the Henry classification system, which became the basis for modern fingerprinting methods. Fast forward to 1903, the famous case of Will and William West shook things up and highlighted the need for reliable identification, boosting fingerprinting use in the US. The authorities confirmed that both of their fingerprints were definitely unique to each other. Therefore, it was proved that they were actually two separate individuals with extremely close similarities. But the biggest question still remains, was there a connection between these two men or was it all just an incredible coincidence? According to sources, a clerk responsible for handling incoming and outgoing letters for the inmates revealed that the prison mail records indicated that both men seemed to have written letters to the same family members during their time in prison. This could suggest that they were actually related. However, the authenticity of this information was not considered reliable. Both of them denied their relationship and claimed they had never met before. Nevertheless, a few people who claimed to know these two men confirmed that they were twin brothers. But the authorities had a hard time proving this as birth records were not strictly maintained during that era. Therefore, they finally concluded and had to accept that both these men were not related to each other in any way, and no further investigation was done to find out their relationship. Will West, the newer inmate, served his manslaughter sentence and completed his time in prison. He was released after serving his sentence, but the exact date of his release was not documented. But the weird thing was that the man completely disappeared after his release from prison, and his whereabouts were never known to anyone. Surprisingly, there are no records of him in history post-prison time. This remains a mystery to this day. His doppelganger, William West, on the other hand, had a pretty eventful time in Leavenworth Prison. He was even kept in solitary confinement for creating creating havoc and indulging in brutal fights with other inmates. However, by 1916, he had transformed into a model prisoner and had gained the trust of the authorities. But in the same year, he also attempted to escape from prison, failed, was caught, and brought back. Finally, in 1919, he was released on parole. But wait, there's still another twist to this story. The tale of Will and William West later became linked to many controversies. In an article, it's mentioned that Henry Falds, the first person to introduce fingerprints as a form of biometric identification, presented an entirely different account of the incident, mentioning only one inmate's name. Falds stated that William West had been arrested in Kansas as a murder suspect, and shortly afterward, another man with the same name and Birdian measurements had been arrested on a minor offense. After taking both men's fingerprints, the authorities identified the second man as the actual suspect, and the first William West was cleared. M.W. McClockery, who was the appointed warden of the penitentiary during that time, however, makes no mention of Will and William West's case, which was even stranger since he was the one who requested permission from higher authorities to install the fingerprint system at the penitentiary. Many people believed that the Will and William West case was a cover-up to hide the failures of the prison system. Some are still searching for answers. What do you think about this case? Let us know in the comments. Until then, see you in the next video.